You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 118. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Today we are in the third of eight episodes all about how to let go and surrender. If you missed the previous week's episodes, go back and listen to those first so you can hear them all in order. Start at bexby.org slash let go, and then follow the links at the end of each episode to get to the next one. Week one was the introduction to how and why to let go and surrender, and how these eight episodes will follow and provide context for the Let Go and Surrender journal. Last week, I shared some specific ways you can practice surrender. I am so curious if you have tried any of those specific activities for yourself. Have you cleaned anything out? Have you let any quote-unquote things go? Were you able to catch yourself throughout the week and say, no, I don't complain, or say no to worry? How did you say yes to abundance this past week? Were you able to give? What did you receive openly and gratefully? This week, we are settling deeper into surrender now that we have had some time to let our minds get used to the idea of it, and maybe we've already started practicing in some small ways. Now let's focus even more on how we can let go in order to have healthy relationships with ourselves and others. Let's get a little more specific about what might be blocking us, and let's notice and accept the discomfort that comes along with transformation. The main theme for today's episode, and for letting go and surrendering in general, is to accept. In order to have healthy relationships with others, you accept them as they are. You have a healthy relationship with yourself when you accept yourself. When you accept reality and your own lack of control, the obstacles and blocks dissipate. You feel more comfortable when you accept the uncomfortable parts of growth. We can create and enjoy healthy relationships with ourselves and others. When we have expectations about how we should act and how other people should be, we may be inviting stress and resistance. And as a side note, another main theme for today's episode could be irony, because as I was preparing, so many ironies popped up for me. The first irony was when I was thinking about some of my own relationships and wondering what stories I could share to demonstrate letting other people be and act how they are. And I thought of someone I know who tends to complain. I thought to myself, this person complains too much. It is not helpful. I don't like it. The irony is I was complaining to myself about this person's complaining. And last week I shared that part of practicing surrender is to say no to complaining. (laughs) Have I mentioned that I am my own number one client and student? These podcast episodes are for me to teach and remind myself first and foremost. The second relationship example to share shows how I accept or reject the exact same behavior in two different people for different reasons. Sometimes I spend time with a person who suffers from some cognitive decline and memory loss. In the span of a 20-minute conversation, this person might tell or retell the same anecdote or story three or four times. I know this and I accept it, so when we have a conversation, I react kindly and with love to the first telling of the story and also the fourth retelling of the story 15 minutes later. Our conversation sounds like it is on a loop and that is fine. 
In another relationship, sometimes I talk with someone who sometimes tells me the same stories and opinions over and over again, but I don't accept it. In fact, I get really frustrated and annoyed. I hope I'm still reacting kindly, but I know on the inside I am not feeling love, I'm feeling annoyed. What is the difference between my reactions to the same behavior from two different people? In my first example, I have accepted and I expect that I will hear the same story told within one conversation. In the second example, I don't expect the person to repeat themselves and I don't think that they should. I think they should remember what we've already talked about before. Now that I'm sharing the story with you, I can see so clearly how I have the option to accept the repetitive storytelling all the time instead of telling myself that a person should not repeat themselves. I can accept the behavior of the second repetitive storyteller just like I accept the first. I can remember people are how they are and they do what they do and I don't need to think that they should be different. Thinking that thought is so much more peaceful for me. How can we let go in our relationship with ourselves? We can remind ourselves that we are 100% worthy and always have been and always will be. That means we do not have to strive to be better than we are or prove anything to anyone or ourselves. If any feelings of shame, doubt, guilt, remorse, unworthiness, or anything like that create stress for us, we can just let go of those emotions. I can remind myself that I am a successful, mature, self-sufficient human whose basic needs are always met and who is creative and able to grow and learn and also receive help from others. I do not need to please other people to be worthy of their love. How can we let go in our relationships with others? We can allow others to be who and how they are and decide to love them unconditionally. We can remember that what we think their expectations of us are may not be their expectations at all. Those might just be our own expectations that we are projecting onto other people. How convoluted, right? How would you like to let go in your relationships, both with others and with yourself? Is there anything blocking you from just accepting Here's another irony that popped up as I was preparing this week's episode. I was catching up with a friend and she asked what I was working on. I said that I was working on this episode, but I was feeling blocked. She asked what the topic was and I said, it's clearing blocks. (laughs) I know, the irony is blaring in my ears. Here I am trying to control the outcome of this episode. I want it to be helpful and interesting and thought-provoking. My brain is telling me that it needs to be quote-unquote good enough. All these suggestions and rules and expectations about this episode had been blocking me from working on it. These blocks are creating stress and resistance for me. Another way to settle more deeply into surrender is to notice thoughts and feelings that block and then clear those blocks. What thought is making me feel like I cannot let go, or in other words, like I need to control? Maybe it's a thought like I'm a perfectionist, or maybe I think everything needs to be good and this isn't good, so I need to make it good. In general, I don't think we do walk around sharing or consciously thinking to ourselves that we don't think we're good enough or that whatever we do needs to be perfect in order to be acceptable. But even without announcing those vocally, those kinds of thoughts show up subliminally and subconsciously and so subtly, so frequently. Those thoughts are so familiar that we don't even notice or question them. My belief that I need to make a podcast episode that is helpful and interesting and thought-provoking and that it needs to be good enough has been a block for me this week. What beliefs do you hold that are currently keeping you from moving towards just letting go? You can dissect and dismantle your blocks in a few different ways, intellectually, metaphorically, and subliminally, and probably many more. 
My blocks about this episode crumbled as I was talking about it with my friend. I was intellectually able to prove to myself that there is no such thing as a good enough episode and that other people's reactions to it is not in my control. You can also clear blocks intellectually by journaling and talking through the blocks to a friend like I did or to a coach. So let me know if you want some help with your blocks. A metaphorical way to clear your blocks could be really fun and creative. You could write what is blocking you on a piece of paper and burn it ceremoniously, or you could do some kind of ritual to metaphorically represent the clearing of a block. Let me know if you decide to do something like this. It could be super interesting. A subliminal way to clear something that is blocking you is to demonstrate to your brain how the block is not even real. So for this week's podcast example, as I got started working on the episode, I was subliminally showing my brain that the block was not actually blocking me. One of my favorite ways to move towards something is to give what I think I want. This subliminally shows my brain that whatever I want is possible and it is available. So for example, if I want attention from others, I can shower others with attention. If I want to feel financially abundant, I can leave a big tip and donate to a favorite cause. If I want to feel like I have more time, I can slow down and consciously take time to break down the block of feeling rushed. These are all examples that I have applied in my life personally, and they really do work. Part of your brain might be feeling a little uncomfortable about some of today's ideas and suggestions. This is totally normal. You can count on discomfort as you consider letting go. We can get comfortable in the discomfort of giving up control. If one of the biggest blocks to letting go that you face is the fear of the unknown, that may be your brain's way of signaling that you are not comfortable with discomfort. No kidding. Not many people are. We are such a paradox. Our brains tell us, I want new, exciting, and different. And in the same breath, it tells us, I hope things never change. The funniest thing to me about the whole idea of giving up control is that we don't even have control to give up. If you are stressed out because you are planning every detail and forecasting how people will behave and what will happen, you are spending a lot of energy and inviting so much cortisol into your bloodstream over a misunderstanding. Your brain thinks, if I plan everything and it all goes according to plan, it will be known, not unknown. And I like known better. The misunderstanding is that the prediction that things will go according to plan, it's not true. The misunderstanding is that the future could ever be known instead of unknown. Here is this week's verse to repeat to yourself or just to listen to. You can modify it to make it your own or choose something completely different. Let me remember to be excited and joyful. Fill me with curiosity wonder, and openness to new experiences. I know I can enjoy and create and thrive. I can be passionate and motivated. Let life be comfortable. Let me be inspired. Let me surrender. Aligning with Maslow's hierarchy, by now, hopefully, you know your survival needs are met. You have air, water, food, and shelter. Now you can focus on safety and security. We have moved up from the root chakra to the sacral chakra so we can think about relationships, pleasure, and creativity. A fun assignment for this week might be for you to put two things together to create something brand new. Bring something new into existence that did not exist before. A few journal prompts for you this week are, why is it safe to give of myself freely? What do I think about feelings of worthiness, resentment, guilt, and shame? How can I let life be comfortable even when I am uncomfortable? 
You can see more of the prompts and the activities to help you settle into surrender in section three of the Let Go and Surrender journal. There is a link for it in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash settle. That's S-E-T-T-L-E. Before we go today, think about who you know, a friend, a family member, maybe a frenemy, I don't know, (laughs) who might benefit from letting go just a little. Do you think they would be open to learning about surrender? You can share the first episode from this series with them for them to check it out. From whatever device that you are listening to this on, look for the share button. Maybe it's under the three dots. Most platforms make it super easy for you to just text or email a link directly to one of your contacts. When you share it, tell them why you think this topic might be helpful for them. And I have one more block that I am noticing in my own thinking that I'll tell you about here in the very last minute. Next week, I'm hosting an in-person workshop. I want to offer it online too, but at the same time. So I want to create a hybrid event, but I also want to keep things easy and simple and uncomplicated. So my block is my belief that the experience should be a quote unquote normal Zoom workshop experience for whoever joins on Zoom. I also have a blocking belief that I like to do things at a certain standard and keeping it easy and uncomplicated means that this hybrid experience will not meet my certain standard. So this is me letting go, not trying to control the outcome or the experience for anyone who joins the workshop. If you would like to join the Why Surrender and How to Let Go workshop and discussion virtually on Zoom next Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Arizona time, send me an email at hi at bexby.org so I can send you the Zoom link. You can also check bexby.org slash let's meet where I post all of my events to see if I have included the Zoom link for the hybrid version in the workshop description. Otherwise, you can see all the links and notes for today's episode at bexby.org slash settle. So that's B-E-X-B dot O-R-G slash S-E-T-T-L-E. And you can leave me a comment there about what you are accepting in your relationships and how you are clearing your blocks as you get comfortable in the discomfort of letting go. Next week, we will be talking about accepting responsibility and power as we surrender. Sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. Thank you for listening. I will talk with you next week. You know what I'm really good at? Asking questions, then listening to the answer and redirecting you if you didn't answer, then showing you your thoughts from how you answered. That is part of what coaching with me is like. I don't have an agenda for you. I don't think I know better than you. I do believe in you and your capacity. If you tell me what you want for yourself, I believe it. I can see it for you. I can show you the thoughts that are keeping you from getting what you want. Then you can drop those thoughts and go get what you want. Coaching really works. Come to my site at bexby.org slash coaching and book a session with me. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 